Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. You got one. Come on, put it in. Keep his hand up, Red. Oh, you got a good one there, Red. Oh, baby, you got a big one on there. Red, wow, you man, I can't even pull it up. Yes, you can. Go ahead. Just keep it. Man, I must have caught the boot. <laughs> <laughs> keep pulling, Red. Play with it. Keep his head up. That's it. It's going to come up. Go ahead. I'm going to saw it off if I keep it. Look, look, man. <laughs> <laughs> dedicated to outdoorsmen everywhere. For those of you who love the heartbeat of the hunt, the jolt of the strike, the magic of the wild, join us, for this is the show for you. American sportsman, you'll enjoy a belly laugh with comedian George Kirby and his friend Red Fox off the coast of Southern California, on board one of America's favorite ocean-going vessels, a party boat. And then with Oakland Raider quarterback Daryl LaMonica, we'll take you to the Argentine Andes for a trophy that's considered high class wherever you go, the Red Stag. Watch it, watch it. It's a good one. But first, the dread of every outdoorsman. Fire. Yet for a quail shooter, controlled burning can transform barren fields into a bird-rich Shangri-La. In spring, the land is burnt so that by next hunting season, it's teeming with the quail's favorite feed. That was one of the innovations made by men like the late Louis B. Maytag. Springs, Alabama, Maytag created the perfect setting for the field trial dog. What he did besides was establish a lofty tradition for American field trials, the National Shooting Dog Championship. There are no bleachers here, for the action covers all the plantation's 21 square miles. To keep up with the dogs, the spectators, known as the gallery, follow on horseback to witness those qualities of spirit, stamina, and range that are so highly regarded in the field trial dog. Officially, the dog's ability is measured by three judges riding at the head of the gallery. Unofficially, however, everybody has an opinion, from the dog owner to dog enthusiast, and needless to say, speculation runs rampant. The American sportsman's Grits Gresham asked champion trainer John O'Neill and his wife Pat what it is you look for in this highly competitive sport. John, and I picked a lot of dogs to, uh, for bird dogs just for hunting. But uh, I've never fooled with this field trial business much. How do you go about picking a, a pup that you think will make a good trial dog? You look for a, a high and merry tail. You look for a high head in carriage. Above all, you look for that independence. For this independence and style and bird finding ability, it's almost exactly the same thing that you look for when you go to select a, a hunting puppy. Independence and boldness and spirit, and desire, as well as for confirmation, good looks, and uh, a good carriage if you have an opportunity to step out in a man's yard or or in a field adjoining field perhaps with a litter of young puppies you can soon see a pup that, that manifests independence gets away from the others picking a young puppy is a puzzle really but these are these are the qualities that you look for and the, and the only thing that you have to go on in picking a, a young puppy from weaning age up to several months of age, really. Well, what's the difference, really, in a, in a hunting dog and a field trial dog? 
And they've just got speaking. to go farther and a little faster in trial. That's you know? all the difference. You get both types out of the same litter. This is the big dog in the field trial, this right. English pointer. Would you call this one a good dog? This is a very good dog. He's nice, short couple, strong, straight legs, square muzzle, dark eyes. He's a very handsome puppy. Uh, in order to train a dog, you have to put your hands on the dog. And if you, if you have a, a pup like this one that you can put your hands on readily without the puppy uh, having nervous symptoms from it, uh, squatting down and so forth. It's so much easier to train that type of dog. Let me see how you work this dog with that. All right. He'll probably balk. This will be one of his first lessons. He hasn't been trained at this point. He before. has not been trained at all to leave. Yeah. Come on, Roy. Here, Roy. A lot of times they sunfish and they want to kick up. But you have to just firmly, gently bring them on into you. Pet him when you get him there and he begins to learn his name and to come to you when he calls. A dog uh, uh, likes two things, best of all, to be petted by a human being and to eat something. You just do that over and over and over and over again. Repetition is the mm -hmm. art of dog training. Yeah. There are some elements of training that occur when puppies are even small, when you first begin to feed them in a pan, such as shooting over them. A gun-shy dog is a worthless dog. That's uh, a lot of dogs have been ruined, I know, by people. They wait and they take a dog out and shoot over him before he's uh, really accustomed to sounds and noises. Oh, yes, unload the shotgun first thing. Yeah. Ruination of more dogs than any other one factor. Every morning when I feed this puppy his milk, I shoot over him just like this. See, he no longer pays any attention to the gun. One thing I've run into is that people try to get a finished dog before he's six or eight months old. Well, that's much too early. On our puppies, we start them walking them in the fields, get them to chase butterflies, little birds, grasshoppers, just get them hunting. That's the most important first thing to do with a puppy. Let him start flash pointing. And, and then the yard training that you began at along about the same time of teaching a dog to stand still when you command whoa, will begin to, to help you to uh, break the dog to stand on his birds. Once he learns that command and will do it, uh, he might even put up a covey of birds and you give him the command, whoa, and you can teach him to stop at that point. You're beginning to get the job done on training the dog. We'll be out in that magnificent Alabama quail country after this message. This is a great place. This is Maytag's plantation. Yes, yeah, Sedgefields. One of the most wonderful places in America, I've always thought. You're not training these dogs for an obedience test? No. No, uh, they have to retain their independence of spirit in order to quest for game and to mm -hmm. find it. Mm -hmm. And and merely you're, you're guiding them through the field, so to speak, trying to keep them in front. But quite often when we're training a dog, we will actually let him drag a check cord in the field while he's hunting. Perhaps a 20 or 25 foot long rope. And that gives you a handle on a young dog. So many times you can you can get to the dog when he's pointing a cover your birds and get hold of the rope before he jumps into the birds and you can begin to curb him then. This usually occurs at uh, 14 to 20 months of age. Dogs in field trials uh, are not required to obey uh, quite as quickly as dogs in, in retriever trials or perhaps even a hunting dog. I guess they're really under better control than they look like they are. Like that, or that it sounds like they are. Yeah. That's, that's, that's correct. When you turn them loose, they're out of sight before you can see them almost. Yes, and there's a white streak across the horizon. Rex looks like the place we might put old Bullet down right up here. If you pull up by this tree, we'll stop. Oh, you. John and Leaf would be able to see him for 200 yards down there. Yeah, I think so. Where's old Bullet? Right there. First cage. All right. Well, what is this dog you're going to run first this morning? Well, this is a, a young dog, about half, what we call half broke. He'll do some pointing and hold, his, hold some of the birds. His name is Bullet. We think he's a good prospect. Well, that's old Bullet, huh? He sure looks like Sentry. Sure does. He's a solid white pup, just like his dad. A little bit smaller in size. Well, seems a nice afternoon for a bird hunt, Oh, Rip. isn't that great? A little windy, maybe. Yeah. Okay, turn him loose. All right. All right, Bullet. Yeah, we'll be able to see him for about 30 seconds, I believe, the way he's going. Well, I think we'll see him longer than that, maybe, Grits. 
He sure runs with that head up, doesn't he? Oh, yes. That's what we look for in these class field trial yeah. dogs. A dog with a lot of animation and speed and drive mm -hmm. and, and with his head and his tail in the air. Well, I can see that you'd really have trouble following him on foot. Oh, yes. He might be a little wide for foot hunting, but we hope that uh, he'll make a horseback-type dog. Yeah. Actually, by hunting them from horseback, will tend to increase their range and by quickening your pace when you do it. Riding along faster than we're doing now and using the proper driving signals with your whistle, quite often you can encourage a dog to increase his range some. You're not too particularly interested in getting him to firm up? I'm beginning to work in that direction now. Uh -huh. He's getting to the age of around 16 months when it's advisable to get them to start being a little steady. How soon do you figure that you want to really steady him down? All by the time he's uh, 20 to 24 months old, I'd like to have him well broken, steady to wing and shot at that time. It has a great advantage in bird hunting, and that is uh, control over your dog when you kill some birds. Then you have, to, you have your dog right there, and you can direct him to the, to the game that's down without him chasing the other birds off to the woods. If the dog will stand there, a lot of times a hunter could reload his gun and, and uh, get another shot. Hey, you got a point. Oh, he's pretty, isn't he? Pretty. I like it. He's around behind him if I can hit him. Get hold of that check cord. Have you bring the gun and shoot over him if you will. Whoa. Whoa, man. Whoa, bullet. Whoa, boy. Whoa, man. He's really got Try style. Get your hands on the dog when you're breaking him, you see, and stroke him just a little bit. That helps steady him, give him confidence. All right, Pat, walk in and flush in front of him. Let's see what he does. Whoop. Whoop. He's beginning to steady now to shot. Right. A few more lessons and he should be a good one. That's great. What would you think about going and seeing some of those shorter running dogs now? Sounds we, good. Who with this young field trial prospect? Come on, Bullet. Rich, while I get these dogs out, why don't you get your gun and uh, let's shoot a few birds right. for these dogs. We've been working on the retrieving. Come on, buddy. Come on, sport. Oh, what? Uh -huh. It's a likely looking spot down here, Grits. Oh, this is great looking country. Notice the feed patch we're walking through here. Yeah. We plant every year. This dog sure works nice for uh, for hunting on foot like this. Right, just more restricted in range, what you have to have. How long you been working with him? Oh, about two years on each one of these dogs. One, really about three years on sport over here. That a boy. Find us a bird. Yeah, buddy. People don't realize a lot of times that it's instinctive for a dog to point. You can't just teach him to do that. There's no way to teach a dog to point. He, he must come to this phase of his training by himself, and it, it usually comes through experience. We have a dog trying to point right here behind these bushes. Come on. Up, point. He sure oh, does. There's a point. He's got a point right there. Or its own point. Yeah. You want to shoot one if he gets up? Yes, sir. And we'll see He's... if he'll retrieve today. Oh, yep. Try right over here in front of him. All right. Let me come yep. in from in the front there. All right. See. See what happens. Old oh, man. Must be one running in front of us here somewhere. Must be. All right, Fort. Look out, buddy. See it. Come on. Come on. See it. Once they smell those birds, they really get the fever. Mm -hmm. Oh, they get the fever pitch then. Tear up briars, bushes, or anything else to get them. Careful, buddy. What do you think, John? Look like he's right on him. All right, sport. There, there you are. are. Right there. Oh, good. Beautiful. But he whoa, backs whoa, pretty buddy. good. But he just backs fair. We've yeah. been working on it. Whoop. Whoa. Whoop. Whoop. I try to watch where the singles go. Steady whoa, him buddy. down. All right, go ahead, Rich. Right. Whoa, buddy. There he goes, Grit. He's still going. <laughs> That's the way to disappoint a dog. Get out, man. Oh, whoop. Looks like Point. we hit him right nice. here. 
Yeah, he says he, says he smells something right here in this brush yeah. pile. Careful, buddy. There we go. Hey, there we go. Hey, good. Huh? He knew where he was all the time, didn't he? Come on, come on. That's a good doggy. Oh, that was a good doggy. Another bird back here, John. That's a tough one. You're going to have to give me odds on this shot. That's a typical Alabama quail shot there now. I mean, we got some like this in Louisiana, well, too. briars are bad. Get that one, we'll give you an A+. Plus. There you go. Nice shot. That's the second one. Oh, that was a great shot. Well, we've had a pretty good shoot, I believe. We've found quite a few birds. Looks like we're working on back toward the wagon. I really enjoyed seeing the way you train your Alabama dogs, your trial dogs and hunting dogs. You know, I'm a hunter at heart. Uh, I don't think I'll ever be a big trial man, but I really appreciate what the trial dogs have done for hunters. Yeah, when you look in the pedigree or background of almost any shooting dog, you'll find somewhere in there a great field trial dog or two. Yeah, there's nothing like the enthusiasm of a real field trial man, is there? Nothing in the world. And what I really like to see is one of these fast-going, classy, high-headed, high-tailed field trial dogs going over a hill in Alabama. That's the real thrill. Thank you.